so this idea of uh, bond line structures, what they're about. So let's see if we come. So let's see if we could come up with some molecular formulas for these, uh, and let's go over the rules as to what they mean. So in a bond line structure, at every endpoint and intersection, there is a carbon. So with that being said, let's count how many carbons that we have on this chain. So one, two. Three, four, five, six. Right, we have endpoints and intersections. So this is actually C six. Now, hydrogens are not explicitly shown, and so they're implicitly shown, and so we actually have to count how many hydrogens are actually on the chain, right? Because these are purely we only show we only show non hydrogen, um, non carbon and non hydrogen, uh, my, uh, you know, atoms on one line structures except for like you know uh, functional groups right so let's count how many hydrogens we have here right if we have one carbon here that means that we actually have to have three hydrogens because that would that would be the only case that satisfied the octet rule so at every end point uh, there will be a CH3 or three hydrogens bonded to that carbon so there's three Think about this one. There's two bonds already bonded to this carbon, so therefore we need two more hydrogens to bond to that carbon to satisfy the octet rule. So this is two, this is three, sorry about that. Two, 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 three, which will give us a grand total of 14 hydrogens. All right? Let's look at this one again. How many carbons do we have? All right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six carbons. So this is C6. Now we need some hydrogens, right? Because remember, there are hydrogens on the chain, right? So here again, we have one carbon. So that means it has to be bonded to three hydrogens, right? So this is three. Be careful, there's one hydrogen here because there's already three bonds to that carbon. So we need one more to form that octet. So this is three plus one, which is four, plus three more, which will be. 7 plus 2, which would be 9 plus 2, which would be 11 plus 3, which would be 14. All right, and for learning purposes, we could kind of just fill in these hydrogens and to see what's really going on. We have a carbon bonded to a hydrogen, which is bonded to a hydrogen, which is bonded to an hydrogen. We have a carbon bonded to two hydrogens because it already has two bonds. Sorry for that right there. We have carbon bonded to hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. And we have carbon bonded to hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. So we're just kind of just basically filling in them mental in our head. How about this one? All right, again, every endpoint and intersection is a carbon. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is C6 also. How many hydrogens? Well, we have three right here. We have one. We have three. We have one because there's already three bonds. We have three and we have three hydrogen. So this will add up to give us a grand total of H um, 14 hydrogens, right? So these all have the same molecular form, just different atom connectivity. And so these are what we call constitutional isomers, right? So let's look at a more difficult one, see if we can come up with a molecular formula, all right? Kind of already helped us because this part is tricky. Right. So let's look at this compound. There's a sulfur here. There's not a carbon here, so we gotta be careful. So let's look at the carbon. How many carbons we have? We have one, two. Now we have a carbon here because this is actually a carbon bonded to a carbon that is bonded to a triple bond that is bonded to a carbon. So really, there's actually a carbon here and a carbon here that is bonded to a carbon here uh, which is bonded to a hydrogen to satisfy this carbon's octet rule so really what's going on let's see how many carbons we have we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven uh twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so we have 15 carbons, so this is C15. Now how many hydrogens do we have? Well, let's count. You know, we can start from either way. Uh, you know, I'll start over here. So we have three hydrogens here. Let's add up our numbers. We have three hydrogens here. 
we have two hydrogens here because again uh, there is two bonds bonded to a carbon so we need two hydrogens to satisfy that, that octet rule right uh, we have three bonded here we have none bonded here because again there's two four six eight so there's eight valence electrons around this carbon so we have none bonded here we have one no, we have none bonded here. Sorry about that. Even I am making mistakes. <laughs> but we have none bonded here. Two, four, six. All right. We have one bonded here. Alright. Alright, so that, that's it for a ring. We have three bonded here. We have one bonded here. Alright. We have uh two bonded here obviously there's one out here all right so let's count it out now so three three six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen so we have nineteen hydrogens here all right and obviously one sulfur and one chlorine atom so this will be our molecular formula for this compound how about the last one a little bit more easier again every endpoint every intersection there's a carbon so this is one carbon two carbon three carbon four carbon five carbon so we already established that this molecular form will be something along the line of C, uh, C5, right? So now we're gonna need our hydrogens, right? For educational purposes, uh, we're gonna meant we're not we're not gonna we'll just we'll just fill them up, right? So we have a carbon that's bonded to three hydrogens here, all right? That's what the line is telling us. We have two hydrogens here, all right? We have two hydrogens here. Be careful, here we have none because as you could see we have a bond here, a bond here, two bonds here that will satisfy a carbon's octet rule. So you have no hydrogens here and you have three hydrogens here that is bonded to a carbon. Alright, so let's count how many hydrogens we have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Alright, so let me... Okay, this cleaner so this is c5 h10 oh obviously there's just one oxygen so this is how we look at bond line structures counter hydrogens counter carbons and whatever other atom is on the compound uh, uh, to 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 uh, to get a right molecular formula now just some general tips and the more you see these structures the more you be comfortable with seeing them and knowing how much stuff, how many carbons and hydrogen is on the chain. So in general, something like this uh, will contain two, hy two hydrogens, right? Something like this will contain one hydrogen, right? Because you have a carbon that is sandwiched between three bonds, so therefore it needs one hydrogen to satisfy its octet rule, right? Something like this, zero carbon zero hydrogens right because again you have a carbon that is sandwiched in the middle and this is two four six eight so you already have eight balance electrons so this is a trend you guys need to be familiar with um, and certainly uh you know especially this 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 could be connected a different way right i could draw this at like you know something like this right right but 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 the just the general idea of you know, some sort of look and stuff like this, you know there's not going to be any hydrogens uh, when it comes on to accounting your molecular formula.